Today's talk is a close look at the costs that Mercedes is experiencing with their class 7 50,000 pound freight truck versus the cost being incurred by Tesla with their 80,000 pound truck. And I think you'll find the, the results kind of interesting. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Bonjour, wie geht's? Guten Tag, Nihal Mal. I was uh, in. Um, Bob Lutz made a comment where he said, "Look, the problem with Tesla is that if it costs a hundred thousand dollars for uh, a sort of middle-range Model S Tesla, how in the world are they going to be able to sell trucks that?" Um, typically cost between a hundred and a hundred and thirty thousand dollars to customers around the world. So likely we're talking a two, three hundred thousand dollar truck, which wouldn't be cost effective for most of the businesses that have to use it. So I thought that was an interesting comment that he made. So I decided to maybe do a breakdown of what the numbers are like. Let's start with Mercedes uh, slap Daimler Benz and their class seven trucks. So Mercedes has decided to come out with a class with, with uh, van delivery vans that go 150 miles. They've come out with a class six truck uh, under the Fuso brand that goes between 100 and 120 miles, and they're leasing that vehicle for $600 a month. And then now they've come out with a class seven truck, which is capable of 50,000 pounds of freight, and they're saying the range on it is someplace in the um, 200-ish plus or minus 20 miles zone. What was interesting about this vehicle is that it's using an 18650 battery and according to JB Storble those battery packs um, are running Tesla still about thirty thousand dollars in order to build an 18650 battery that's a hundred kW. So Mercedes is definitely using three of these packs but possibly four and let's say that the cost per unit is about thirty thousand dollars per pack times four um, we're talking 120k and this is just in batteries again from Jay Boost Robo there are four let's say Model S engines in there so let's say that's another 20-ish maybe 30k so now we're up to about $150,000 for that vehicle. And then now we have to do the rest of the truck and that's the, you know, the rear of the truck and, you know, the front and electronics and all that. So one could argue that's another minimum 20 grand, possibly $30,000. So out the door, what we're facing with the Mercedes Class 7 truck is about a $200,000 bill for a vehicle that goes about 200 miles and totes about 50,000 pounds of vehicle and weight. And so the question is, what's the deal on this and how do customers react and does it make any sense? And the answer is they've been testing these vehicles in Stuttgart, Germany successfully and uh, they're now rolling them out with customers around the world starting to buy them at those higher prices one of the answers to those high costs is to actually go for a leasing model instead of selling them. That way you can, in theory, um, most companies tend not, you know, t tend to lease, not buy. And I guess you could add up benefits that are associated with that. What's fascinating to me about how those numbers are working is that um, when you reduce uh, operating costs, be it fuel, as well as repair costs by let's say 70 percent the 200k which is almost double what you have to pay for a comparable diesel truck doesn't look as bad plus you can meet government mandates regarding pollution etc so bottom line is that if you go through what the numbers look like that three times better efficiency from coming from electricity versus using diesel to power the truck eliminates pollution reduces cost enough so that even though you're facing 
a big bill to pay for the initial vehicle, customers are signing up. In the case of the the Class 7 uh, diesel, Class 7 Mercedes under the Fuso brand, um, they're just rolling it out right now, so we don't know what orders are like uh, based on the prices we just described. But it was kind of interesting because in the case of the Class 6 truck under the Fuso brand, the large customers who are allowed to try them out have all been like, we'll take as many as you can make. And so this, despite the fact that they're using definitely two, but possibly as many as three uh, 100 kW battery packs from a Model S inside of those trucks. So even in the Class 6 version, people are facing a 100 k bill um, for battery packs, and then they build trucks up from there. So let's say it's $125,000 versus them paying 60 to 80 k for that vehicle originally. And again, Mercedes has chosen to go for a $600 a month lease as these are being, being rolled out, but initially only to big customers. I want to give a shout out quickly to my friends who are uh, constantly on my case about, you know, where do you get your info from, et cetera, et cetera, and note that, you know, Mercedes is, um, is gone for the $600 lease price, which really eliminates the whole discussion of what it costs to buy because uh, that's not transparent. The shout out to my angry uh, customers goes to the fact that uh, Mercedes is saying delivery times for orders that they've received is someplace in the middle of next year, even though they've been working on the truck for 10 years. And the issue is that they're building new plants to handle the production for these vehicles. And what's happening is Mercedes is transitioning over from using Tesla batteries into using their own first drive trains then batteries as they can and it's my sense that based on them not putting all the product on the street that the customers want right now that they actually are still buying batteries to to provide solutions to customers and don't have the ability to produce at scale yet these solutions so that um, anybody wanting one can just walk into the store and purchase it you do have to give Daimler Benz credit though because versus where Tesla's at in sort of still the test phase and even Cummins, they deserve a lot of credit because they've been testing it aggressively in different settings and they're now taking orders and have it in customer hands and being used in a, in a visible way, which is very different than everybody else. So they've just gotten to market earlier than anyone and they deserve credit for that. I wanted to then now, so let's say we build up a class seven truck, 50,000 pounds of carrying, on a Mercedes platform, which is an 18650 battery, that number's a 200K purchase price. And then all the other benefits you get bring that price into line with what people are dealing with. Uh, and therefore, you can sell them because customers can get the benefits. And particularly, if you're leasing, you don't actually, out the box, face the larger uh, purchase price that... Uh, it's prohibitive for many people given how much higher the output is on the front end. If we switch over to Tesla, as we've discussed in previous videos, J.B. Strobel is suggesting that we're using four battery packs from the largest battery pack from the Model 3 uh, plus four of, of the drivetrains for the Model 3 to power their trucks. So if in fact those numbers are correct, let's for giggles say it's five of them. The, the largest Model 3 engine is going for $8,600. So this um, vehicle then, let's say for giggles, we have five Model 3 engines at $10,000 a piece, which is 50K, plus four Model 3 engines at about, um, you know, let's say $3,000 a piece. So what we're ending up is around $60,000 before we put a cab and all the other stuff on our uh, Tesla Semi. So let's say theoretically we can put uh, the outside shell on for another ten grand. Again, we're in that sixty dollars to $70,000 range for worst case scenario on what the Model 3 Semi, Model 3 based Semi looks like. What this results in is 
customers by default are looking at they can spend two hundred thousand dollars for a fifty thousand pound um, Mercedes uh, truck or they can spend you know Tesla can come in anywhere from 130 to 150 K uh, for their product and in essence it's over double what their costs are so and and I built those costs out as you've seen from sort of a worst case scenario so basically what we're talking about is you now Tesla has a 50 percent advantage with a 2170 battery over competing firms that are trying to mirror them currently and they have such a wide advantage that when you add in the 70 percent reduction in cost related to trucking in this space you know Tesla could walk in and say Mercedes wants two hundred thousand dollars for their truck in essence and we'll offer you a truck that carries thirty thousand pounds more and um, and has um, double the range or 50% more range, let's say between three and 400 miles, but we'll give it to you for 150K. So Tesla could play all kinds of games on pricing. You know, if, I mean, the mind blowing consideration is if Tesla said, we'll give you our truck at the same price that Mercedes is giving you their truck, except for we give you double the miles and 30,000 pounds more weight, but the price is the same. So can you imagine if Tesla actually said, how about um, you pay us if the equivalent of $200,000 per truck and, um, and we give you way better performance than what, Tesla, than what Mercedes is offering on a number of metrics. And in the meantime, the profit margin is the dif distance between about $65,000 and two hundred thousand dollars or per truck profits up in the hundred and thirty thousand dollars per zone which is wow that's pretty mind-blowing to be able to get that kind of margin and also have your customers getting solutions that provide uh, a great value so I think this is a fascinating you know sort of play around with numbers situation and hopefully Tesla is putting those battery packs sitting around, not completed because the Model 3 is slow, into some of the other channels like trucks. Because I think they could make a killing there, which would help feed the rest of the country uh, company. Look forward to your com comments on this. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, max gut, au revoir, the heat throat. Please like and subscribe. And look in, uh, any uh, questions or input you might have. Always appreciated.